15 degrees, you can see your breath. Out here in the lake of fact. Breaking tables like it's poetry. Where else would you have to be? Pinto Ron Elvis in the Le Poncho. The members that you need to know. Cause once you're out here now, your family. Where else would you have to be? Where else would you have to be? Welcome into the Nickel City Crew. I am your host, Rob Crippen. Please like us on Facebook and follow us on Instagram and Twitter at Nickel City Crew. This episode, along with all of our episodes, are presented by Crippen Legacy Entertainment here on Spreaker and StreamYard. We're so glad that you're joining us for some of your Buffalo Bills and NFL content again today. And as always, these are my Bills thoughts said out loud. It's a vibe so ridiculous. Since 12 plus 83 was sick. The shout rocking like a symphony. Where else would you like to be? All right, let's get straight to it. Um, it's 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 funny. It's sobering because I um, these seasons come to like such an abrupt halt, and then all of a sudden, um, you know, everything that you're working for, everything that you are, um, uh, you know, hoping for is just it's just done. And obviously, we don't play on the team or anything like that, but uh, we are invested uh, in the team, and we are invested in their, you know, as I always said in my intro, like our our their their failures their successes like we're we're with them the entire way and um i wouldn't have it any other way but it doesn't make uh days like today any easier joining us tonight as always my co-host riding shotgun adam dump truck repsick holla at the crew dt we gotta we, we you know it's part of it we gotta do these days too so when the season ends and we don't uh come out as a super bowl champion we gotta we gotta still face the music what's good man nickel city What's up? What's up, baby? What's up, Rob? <laughs> What's um, up, man? We, we, we talk about it all the time. We do this as kind of therapy. It's, it's therapeutic to get it off, and we probably need it more than ever tonight for sure. Um, you know, I'd like to start off for sure just saying uh, another year in the books, another great season overall, I think, is, you know, from a fan perspective of gearing up and, you know, having all the experiences we've had, we're, we're just waiting for that big last one. And, and hopefully we see it. Hopefully we see it. But um, you know, it was a good year up until then, and you know, looking at looking great to get back and chop it up with you tonight. And had a good weekend together up until, like you said, that final. It it was like all that build up, all that fire, and then it was just over. So here we go. Yeah, I mean, it, it's crazy because you know, I I didn't really see this coming in respects to. I know some people said that they're not surprised and things like that. And based on the team and the defense and yada, yada, yada. But I really felt like we had a good shot, you know, to be, to be completely honest with you. And it's funny because you're absolutely right. Like we just, we invest so much, you know, and I, I'm, I'm, I'm tired uh, DT to be completely honest. And I, I expressed that to you after the game. I mean, we'll talk with the nickel city crew uh, tailgate report at the end of the show presented by 26 shirts, but um just tired, you know, DT, to be completely honest, tired Bills Mafia, Nickel City Crew. Um, it, it's funny because, like, we've we've got emotional investment. Um, you know, we've got um, physical investment, you know, going to the games, the tailgating, and, you know, getting everything ready to go and thinking about Big Ben and how we were all setting up the, the tents and all that other stuff and getting the blowers ready and all the, the good stuff on, on Sunday. And then there's also a financial investment because none of that stuff's free, so you got to go to the game. And regardless if you're a season ticket holder like myself and you, you know, either way, you still have to, you know, decide to spend the money and you're going to go, even if it's just to a playoff game or the season open or whatever the case may be. And it's just I'm just I'm tired. I love the bills. Um, I, I show it with my my pocket, my wallet. And then, you know, I actually get in the car and then I drive to come to see the bills because I love them so much. And I left, you know, those grass lots very, very um, exhausted. And that's why I named the episode the way that I did, DT, because I just um I thought it was a good shot. I thought that we had an, an opportunity to go to Baltimore this week and and really kind of put up a good fight. And, you know, some guys get you know back from the injury list and so on and so forth. And the, the way that the game ended and just like it was just so abrupt and so quick that after that two minute warning, you know, I felt pretty good about our opportunity coming out of the two minute warning. And then all of a sudden it was just it was just over. It was just like a swift kick in the nuts because before you know it, it's done. And um and I don't, you know, I'm still been having a little bit of tough time 
rectifying that. You see, I'm in all black tonight, like a funeral. Mm. And then you get on and you're, you're black as well. And it just kind of matches the mood because of uh, the fact that I just, I didn't expect it. I know that, you know, obviously there's a chance that you can lose, but I just didn't see it coming. Um, and, and I think the abrupt nature of the two minute warning, and I will go over that because I guess it's our responsibility as mafia members to, to debate it or talk about it. But I, I feel like the way that it ended DT was just, it was just like, it was over before you could even process it. it you know what I mean? And like, I, I stood, I stood there at the seats and you were with me and I just had my head down. Cause like, I was like, it's, it's, it's really over. And, and th there's another year that goes by. And, and what do we always talk about how the years stack on top of the others DT? And this is, um you know, another year that, uh, that we didn't get it done and, and didn't even get back to the AFC championship game, let alone the Super Bowl. Yeah, Rob, I don't know if it's, you know, you and me, we're, we're just getting older as well. And so we're starting to feel these things a little more and, <laughs> you know, and we know, you know, it, it's not forever and we're starting to feel it a little more physically and financially and, and everything else as, as we get older and, and have, you know, adult things and things we got to take care of. And then, you know, this team, it just it, it makes it hard in, in that respect. And you look at the past two years of, you know, last year with, every trial and tribulation you could have had, you know, we had, right? With starting from yeah. the Tops Massacre all the way to DeMar yeah. Hamlin and 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 the, everything in between. This year you have more of the team itself, you know, creating that fatigue of being six and six and no shot we make the playoffs. And then going on this, you know, somewhat, I wouldn't call it miraculous run, but a hell of a run, you know, to, to get to that two seed and, and have these two home playoff games and, so just the exhaustion of up and down and, and, you know, we're the excitement of the season and then, oh, we're screwed and we stink and then, oh, we're back and we're good again. And then yeah, roller it, just coaster. Ends, it just ends like that. So, and, you know, and we had the weather deal here as well. Had to get a game moved and shovel out the stadium. Had to, you know, so it just seems like the past two years more than anything have just been more exhausting than previous Draining. years. And I, yeah. and I don't know if it's, yeah, pre especially – I don't know if it's just we're getting older and, and we're starting to feel it more, Rob, and Nickel City crew, and, you know, everybody's north of 30, and we're going to be closer to 50 than, than 20 here soon. And, and uh, it, you know, but it, it, it feel it. Yeah, I feel it in my bones. I feel it every every aspect. I, I feel the exhaustion and just kind of dumbfounded how it ends. And think of this team as well, you know, that they what they went through last year and then kind of fell short and then, build back up and then still had to deal with some BS, uh, you know, being six and six and getting the game moved and all these injuries. And then this happens too. So, I mean, we're exhausted. The fan base is exhausted and this team's got to be exhausted, Rob. And, and yeah. it's, it, it's, it's tough to find a silver lining two days, three days later here. I, you know, it will brighten up as it always does, I think for us, but Nickel City, well, I'm real with you right now. Like it, it's dark. Like it, it's dark right now. It, it's it. It just don't feel right. It feels we're tired, and I feel everybody involved is as well. Yeah, and, and I think that that's okay. You know, I I I've come to learn that it's okay to feel your feelings. Like it's okay to to feel and sit down in your emotions sometimes and kind of um, you know rest in a for lack of a better term. And I I think that that's something that I think it's healthy to do sometimes and. And you're absolutely right. It's it's kind of dark, and it's dark right now here in Charlotte. It's been raining all day and things like that. But you know, obviously, life still goes on. But I couldn't imagine being a player on this team because everything that you just yeah. talked about made me woozy. With you know, like like Mama Monday says, the vertigo up and down, and it's like that's exactly the the roller coaster ride that they took us on this year. And and the fact that it was you said it wasn't miraculous. It was miraculous because at six and six, you, we could go back to that episode. I didn't think that we would even be in that position. Um, you know, with the Dolphins leading by so many games and you know, catching them. And then obviously it culminates with the week 18 matchup on Sunday night, they flex the game for us. And it's, it's just, you know, we take over the stadium again down in Miami. So um, it was nothing short of miraculous. So I, I give the, the team credit. Um, I give, um, you know, the, the coaches and Sean McDermott on down credit for how they, they rallied after six and six, because it was def definitely real dark back then. But the problem that I've got is that, you know, I'm, I'm starting to feel like there's a, you know, a, you know, the definition of insanity, if it's been talked about, you know, is doing the same thing all the time and then accepting, you know, expecting different results. And I'm, I'm starting to feel like we're getting dangerously close to that. And we've got all off season to talk and we'll take a break here at Nickel City Crew until the draft. But um, you'll hear it on WGR. You'll hear it on your other podcast uh, that you listen to, Bill's Mafia, Nickel City Crew, is that, you know, there's definitely some light at the end of the tunnel. And we'll talk about the optimism for next season. And th there's always a way to get ramped back up. 
But right now, I just feel like sitting in this because of the fact that um, I think that it's a little bit healthy and because of the fact that I, I have invested like a ton, you know, just like Bill's Mafia has. And like I've been doing this a long time. So I think that part of my exhaustion for sure, I know for a fact, is because I'm a season ticket holder out of town. And like I told you after the game, I was like, man, I'm I'm honestly not sure how many more years I could do this. The reason that I have season tickets as long as I've had is because of the fact that I wanted to be along for the ride. Um, I wanted to say that I was in the number when the team got great and when they went on that magical run to the Super Bowl. And now I feel like we're teetering on a little bit of insanity with the leadership because of the fact that I don't know if McDermott can get us over the hump. And I know that some people don't like that terminology, but it really is the same thing. Three straight divisional round losses, one AFC championship game appearance with the best, you know, one of the best quarterbacks in the league, top three, top four at, at the at the worst, you know, with with Lamar and and Patrick Mahomes and obviously with with Burrow now. So other than that, like I'm starting to wonder if we need a new voice, if there's something, you know, different type of direction that the team needs to go to, um, you know, commit to all offense. We'll get to that in a moment with the, you know, the coach's comments from from yesterday at the uh, the end of the year presser. But I'm I'm exhausted. And I, I, I mean, you know, the way I feel right now, DT, I would love to just, you know, watch next season at home, to be honest. I mean, Nate is my middle king. Nate, you already know he loves the Bills. And, you know, he cried like a baby, I heard. Uh, his mother tell me after the game and like, you know, once again, you know what I mean? He, he wears his emotions on his sleeves, but he enjoys watching the games with me so much. So, you know, the way I'm sitting right now, I'm like, man, do I give more money back to the bills next year and, and do it all over again and drive up and, you know, yada, yada, yada. Or do I just sit back and watch it with Nate, you know, this year and, and Quincy and just kind of enjoy it and take it in that way. Like a normal, uh, you know, quote unquote, normal fan would out outside, <laughs> outside of town, you know what I mean? Because uh, it's, it's, it's crazy because, most fans don't act the way that I act. So I've never tried to act like I'm more of a Bills fan or more dedicated than anyone else. But I don't, you know, I also don't ignore the fact that it is a lot. You know what I mean? Driving up 650 miles, 1,300 round trip is a lot. I've always said that I'm not normal. Um, I'm not, you know, uh, <laughs> the typical Bills fan. And I take pride in it. But there does come a breaking point. And um, I'm, I don't know, DT. I, I mean, maybe I do need the offseason to come and the draft to come. Because right now I'm – I. Uh, when they send that email, and they send it right away too before the draft even oh, comes. Yeah. And when they ask for that money again, if they ask me tomorrow, I wouldn't send it to them. So uh, they better leave me alone for a couple months because I do need some time to decompress. Because right now, I'm not sure if I'm coming back right off the bat, man. I'll be there for the whole moment <laughs> or something like that. And then that, after that, like, uh, I, don't, I don't know, man. And that's just you said you go keep it real. I got to keep it real, man. I'm I am I am truly exhausted uh, for sure. I'm truly exhausted. Yeah. That's an interesting uh, thing to kind of uh, joke about, right? Well, the strategy of the ticket office. When do we reach back out? You know, when when is enough time? Enough time to kind of yep. the wind fill and, and get back into <laughs> it, and you know, and but we talked about it all all last week. It was one of the biggest points I was, you know, I I personally made was the fact of it, Josh Allen, year seven of a of a career yep. that he gets hit he, he's taken injuries the past two years that have been on the injury report the entire season you know whether it was the elbow mm -hmm. last year and the shoulder and everything this year and he's getting surgery done on it and everything to to, to move on from it like we know this dude isn't going to play forever he's not going to play a tom brady length career just by the way he plays, he plays and, and everything play and, allow that. Mm -mm. and it took the entire you know seven years so if we get 14 out of them i think that's successful Mm -hmm. Right. And so yeah. halfway in, it takes halfway to get the game we all asked for, the game we yeah. all wanted, the game yeah. we needed as mafia, the excuse we made for ourselves to say, oh, we would have won the Super Bowl if we would have had the Chiefs at home because we yeah. would have beat them and went on and won. Yeah. Well, we got that game with the Chiefs team that was low and down, or not low and down, but I know what you not mean. What they not as good, not, what they were. not as potent. Yep. We get that game seven years. It takes half Josh Allen's career to get that game. And it's the same shit, Rob, you know? So it's like, that's what I'm battling with the most is like, it was, we, we kind of were, were not as realistic as we probably should have been in the early years of this run mm -hmm. of, you know, it's, it'll happen. It'll happen. We, we just need this to happen and it'll happen. We just need this to happen. And it'll happen. Yeah. And then reality sets in and we got that and it's year seven for Josh Allen and we still lose. Yep. And it, it, that's like what I'm battling with the most right now is like, because it, it's a lot. Like it took a lot for us to get here. Like looking back, you know, from I remember breaking the drought and and going to the playoffs. Granted, that was before Josh Allen, but between then 
and yeah. now like everything like all the effort and time and money we've, i've definitely invested way more time and money than i did in the drought like yeah oh i was God, going yeah. to games and yeah you know but it was that was just you, you were getting tickets for 15 bucks and, yeah and, yeah my know, season tickets were way but, less than they are now yeah, <laughs> yeah. Sitting exactly. in the same seat. so you know from that seven from when they break the drought to now like i'm just thinking of like everything i've done in the team and ups and downs and like and we were kind of making a false reality is all we need is this or all we need is this. And I think that's going to be the toughest part of this off season is being real with ourselves as, as a fan base and being real with ourselves as, you know, and this team needs to start being real with themselves of, you know, like you said, definition of insanity, doing the same thing over and over again, expecting different results. I do it with my golf game every summer. You know, things, <laughs> things magically, magically, I don't, I, I, I don't swing for six months because I'm in the winter tundra up here. I'm just gonna come out and be better, and, and you're not. Yeah. So yeah, I don't know, Rob, but that's what I'm battling with the most is like that point of we made this false. Like it's okay because we're gonna get this soon. It's okay because we're gonna get this soon, and then we got what we figuratively wanted. Yeah, and it didn't make a difference. Yeah, I mean, shout out to Scott twenty four seven over at uh, Buffalo fan base. One of our guys. I got it. We got to get with you, Scott. You, you already know you are a priority for next season. We've got to get you on and start doing some cross pollinating um, in respects to Buffalo fan base. So shout out to Scott listening in, a part of Nickel City Crew tonight. And he's absolutely right. I mean, tons of blood, sweat, tears, money, emotions. It, it, it's you know and that's why I, I'm okay tonight. You know, we'll we'll get to it. We'll you know we'll go through the the motions and we'll get to everything that we need to get through. But like, I'm okay. When, when we, we shut down for tonight, I'm okay with taking a step back because I need this time. Like I just, I, and it's not because like, I'm, I'm, you know, what do I always tell you DT? I, I pride myself on being, um, you know, a practical, a logical bills fan. I understand that only one team and I, I just can't stand it when they, after the games and the coaches and everybody wants to know, well, there's only one team that's happy. There's only one team that's happy. And like, <laughs> okay, you know, like I fucking get it. Like I know how sports work. I know how professional sports work, but like, it's not about that. I wasn't um, rose colored glasses thinking that the bills are going to win the Super Bowl every single year or anything like that. But when shit got ramped up after Josh Allen ascended, I felt like it was a great opportunity. The AFC championship game, I gave them. I did not expect us to be there that year, so it was okay. Yes, I was mad at McDermott for his choices of kicking the field goals. Thought that it was very tentative. Thought that it was very cowardly. Um, but, I mean, I was I was still very happy for the trajectory that we were headed on. And then after that, 13 seconds is we always talked about. That's the, that's the gut punch of all gut punches. And because of that, like, it's starting to become something where it's like, well, when is it going to be? And what did we say before this game? Because of all the things that you just laid out, that we, we made ourselves and convinced ourselves – to believe that this is it. Like, okay, hey, we got him here. That's all we needed. There's no Tyreek Hill on that team. Kelsey's looking a little bit older. And, like, this is it. Like, this is great, great opportunity. And it was a great opportunity, regardless of the defensive injuries. Um, and it just, for it to, to end, the, really the way that it ended was just, um, it was crazy because even with the defensive injuries, DT, we'll get to it real quick, but we were right there. And, and somebody had said it on G GR this week. Somebody had mentioned what somebody else had said, and they talked about how the fact that the fact that the Bills are so close in these games to Mahomes and and stuff like that is not an indictment on Josh Allen. It's to it actually props up and shows how great he is because of all the deficiencies around him at certain points in time. And Sunday was no different. That defense with AJ Klein fresh off the couch getting torn up by by Patrick Mahomes twenty yard game. I mean eight twenty yard plays in one game. That's a lot. That's a ton of fucking yards. And because of that, we I mean we were still within it with two minutes. So as we transition. I guess it's a, a rite of passage. It's required to uh, to chop up those last two minutes. If you hear WGR, you hear any of the other outlets, everybody's talking about it. I don't have too much appetite to get to get wobbled down in it, um, but it was the abrupt nature of how we lost um, really um, encapsulates a, a season. So, DT, two-minute warning. You and I are sitting next to each other. Section 104, <laughs> stand up. I am the mayor of Section 104. My first lieutenant is there, Josh Kluhl, right over my right shoulder. Uh, making me feel comfortable as always shout out to him and um it's crazy because yes you know you think about like scenarios dt and of course you want the perfect scenario and the, what's the perfect scenario is that josh allen tumbles in from the one or two yard line with no time expiring on the clock and you know what i mean game over bills you know bills win they, you know what i mean they kicked your extra point just for formality and everything is just not going to be perfect that way so yes i would have loved to bleed the clock what I, what I won't do um, is be a hypocrite. These guys are playing at the highest level 
um, of competition, of sports competition, they are making decisions in a split second. So when Josh Allen sees Shakir come open on that post route, I I just have a real tough time, DT, and I want your thoughts because I've been listening to GR, and I know you were joking with me on Monday, like, don't listen to those guys on the way home, and I'm like, <laughs> I'm going to be consuming every fucking second of this because all I've got to do is drive south back to Charlotte, so there's nothing else for me to do, and I listened to every second from Howard and Jeremy in the morning all the way through Shopin the Bulldog. By the time I got to Charlotte, it was around 4.30 because uh, I left nice and early, and I listened every second, and they were, you know, everybody was parsing over it and things like that, the perfect scenario is, of course, to bleed the clock. I can't get mad at Josh Allen for pulling the trigger when he sees him open because of the fact that he's – it's instinctual, almost, almost. Now, you can tell him before the play, hey, Josh, let's bleed some clock. And, I, I you know, I saw the All-22. I see Diggs on the drag route underneath. I understand what that means. He gets that first down. Then they have to start uh, – Kansas City does – has to start, you know, using their timeouts. But the problem is that there's a double advocate. There's a flip side to that coin as well because there's no guarantee that we're going to get to the end zone after that. There's no guarantee that there's not going to be a fumble. The ball was on the ground three times that night, right? For, just from us, right? Like, so it's a crazy situation where you can't you can't play armchair quarterback, Monday morning quarterback, and say, well, this was a mistake, and this was okay, but this was a mistake. Listen, man, it's all happening in split seconds. He didn't expect Deion Dawkins to get pushed back into his lap by Chris Jones, again, who's an all-pro, have to give credit where credit's due, and he still tried to throw it off and rip it off, and then obviously the third and nine play, um, you know, was – was a little bit less than desirable. But DT, I just have a real tough time on second and nine, getting mad at my all-world quarterback for seeing a receiver open and, and not going for it. The most important thing, and, and McDermott, one of the few things that he said that I, I agreed with after the game was that, yes, the most important thing there was points. You got to go up by the touchdown to force Kansas City to force uh, to go for a touchdown on the next drive because there was still time on the clock. Not just in not just the Bills in this specific situation. In general, that's one of my biggest pet peeves in football is when a team scores down and, and the announcer goes, Oh, I hope they didn't score too early. Nah, like screw that. That you gotta score. Like yes. we were we were down in the game. Yes. You you have to score to win the game no matter what. No matter, no matter what. what happens, you had to put points on the board to win that game. And yeah. the fact of like, oh, that's one of my biggest pet peeves. I can't like, oh, I score too early. You score too early. Granted, yes, was Pat Mahomes cutting us up on on defense? Of co yeah. of course he was all game long. But after the you know the fake punt debacle, I, I don't even want to talk about that tonight. But we get in, we get in there, the fumble, we get the ball back, we go three and out, give them the ball. You and me looking around one hundred four, putting up the one, one stop. We need one stop, one, one stop. stop, and we got we got the fucking stop. And then we get the ball back, and your franchise quarterback. You, you're three. I kept saying three hundred million. You kept correcting me at two two fifty six. <laughs> but basically, up north of two fifty, um, has the ball, yeah, with a chance to win it yeah. in your home stadium in two minutes. Like what? Like that's what you want. That's what you need. Like what else do you want? Is pass the mafia contract before the game and asking them to sign it in blood, and we're all from 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 one hundred four all the way around yeah. the stadium, all the way around. They're gonna all sign it. Twenty four, twenty seven. Josh Allen has the ball at the sure. thirty yard line, one fifty. Sure. Back. Yes. Where do I got sign? it? Love it. And yes, you had had to score no matter what. I don't even if we if he hits Khalil Shakir and Mahomes gets the ball and they got to drive down the field. Well, our coach is the defensive coordinator, and he's found ways to shut down high-profile offenses since he's got in here. You have to you have to go to bed on that. You have to rest on that. That's you right. can't say bleed the clock down and then hopefully you score. And so I agree. I'm, I'm I mean, it would have been it's, it's ideal, down. but I just don't think it's re realistic of to always it want ideal. the but best. Then, but of the everything. but the Bills weren't doing that. The Bills weren't doing that. That wasn't the the game plan of the play call. The first down play call was was the run for for no game, whatever. Right. right. So if if it if it was to bleed the clock and move it down, Khalil Shakir isn't running a post pattern to the end zone then. Another right. play well, unless call, it was a clear out. I heard some people talking about that's the clear out for Diggs and and Josh got greedy, not greedy, but he got he couldn't help he was himself. Wide open. Bill Barnwell says it. I'm like couldn't help himself. I'm like yeah. he's he, he, we've got to score points. Yeah. And this is the yeah. time to score couldn't points. Couldn't help so himself. It's, it's score weird. a touchdown in the fourth quarter to go up. <laughs> In the I division mean, championship yeah. game, that's ridiculous. And I, I have friends on the other side of the stadium, yeah. on the tunnel yeah. side, saying, right. "I mean, he was wide open. He, of course, he's throwing him the ball. Of course, yeah. he's throwing him the ball." So I got no qualms with trying to get trying to get six there. Don't matter what time it is in the clock, you're down in the game. You got to score to win, no matter what. Yep. You have to score to win the game. I'm not taking a chance going. So what are we going to do? Run three times? 
bleed yeah. the clock and then go out there and kick or, you know, whatever. If that was the read and Diggs was the read and he never – he he shouldn't have thrown it there. Then then we got another problem. But I don't no qualms to make that throw. Nine out of ten times he makes that throw. Like it, it, the game of inches, we say it week in and week out. The game of inches, the inch was Deion Dawkins getting completely blown into him. He missed. It just it takes a little just flip during his best season as a pro. Be unanimous yeah. that his best season as a pro, and he's going up against. I won't get on. Yeah, pro. and we that, I won't get on the line or anything like that. You know, I'm the most critical on the line. We not even talking about any of that. It's a split second. It's an inch and an inch, you know, cost you the touchdown. And then I think it kind of rattled the squad, rattled the team, rattled Josh a little bit on third yeah. down. And it was like, third man, was, was that bad. touchdown was right there. <laughs> yeah. That touchdown was right there. We could have been off of that. And that could have, we could have left it in the defense's hands. And then it didn't happen. And they were like, oh, we still got to play third down. And I just don't think they were ready for that third down. So, well, yeah, it, Josh pulled up for third. He scrambled. He left the pocket too early on third yeah. down, goes to the right. And then obviously, you want to see him, you know, throw that thing, you know, to somebody, not, you know, and, and it, it falls in completely harmlessly. So yeah. it's a situation where, you know, I yes, I understand how everybody loves to play Monday morning quarterback. Everybody's a, a, a an expert the next day. Everybody's got the exact way that it should have ended and things like that and how do you bleed the clock properly and things like that. And, well, if the first down run didn't get only a yard, then, uh, you know, it would have afforded – listen, man, second and nine – I loved our chances. Yes, I saw Diggs on the route, uh, you know, after the game. I didn't I, lie. Yeah, yeah. I'm not paying attention to that. But I did see Diggs on the All-22. I understand the the logic behind it. I, I just wanted everybody to understand and remember that even if Diggs catches that ball in the drag route, stays in bounds, we start forcing Kansas City to bleed timeouts, you, We're still, still, down. you still have to get it to the end zone. Yeah. Or at worst, it's the same exact situation uh, that you send Tyler Bass out there for, and that is just to tie the game and to get it into overtime possibly because of the fact that, again, there was time on the clock. So depending on how much time is on the clock when Bass comes out, then you're still going to be in a situation that you're dealing with, giving Mahomes the ball back, still relying on your defense to keep the game tied, and then obviously uh, going into overtime, which, again, starts off with a, with a damn flip of a coin. So there's so many different um, you know ways that it could have ended. I, I don't want to blame my quarterback for, for going for the gutso in that respect. And I don't even no. think it was that. Um, yeah, yeah, I don't even think it was a gutso thing. He, he no. saw a guy wide open in the end zone, and his job's to throw a touchdown. Which also, also, Bills Mafia, as you go into this offseason, for whoever wants to ponder over that last two minutes, don't forget that that's not 13 seconds. Because 13 seconds, they are forced to just to get into field goal range, which was why it was so maddening that why yeah. McDermott and Frazier were playing the type of defensive posture that they were playing with the prevent. That was maddening because they didn't need to get to the end zone. It was not getting into the goal line to win the game. They just needed to get to field goal range. Josh Allen hits Shakir on that route. It's a four-point game, a four-point lead, which forces Kansas City to drive down the field and score a touchdown. And I, you know, I hear people in GR yesterday. Well, obviously, you had any doubt that Mahomes would come down, and score a touchdown the way he was playing? Yes, I get it. It looked like he was happy, but you don't know. So because you don't know, you just have to leave the stuff that you don't know up to that. You know, up to that. Like we don't, we don't know how it ended. So um, I, I, I want to, I want to make sure that it's clear from Nickel City crew as we go into the offseason that we are not going to um, ask for everything. We're not going to. Um, you know, criticize him when he's 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 out there doing something that we can't do in that respect. He's a professional. He's paid, and they're making split split second decisions. So I I can't get on my quarterback for that. Now, and I and I do trust him. And going forward, I do trust him. And I thought that he made the right call in that particular play on second and nine. Third and nine is different, and and whatever happened happened on that one with him rolling out. Now that leads to the next part: Bills Mafia, uh, Nickel City Crew. Let's let's be better. Um, and I and I you know somebody said on Twitter that, you know, it's 98% of the fans are great. And then there's that 2%, you know, rotten apples that are, 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 are ruining for everybody. But whoever's out there, give a death threats to Tyler. Bay. Like, leave him. Like, what is, like, what's that about? Like, we don't have to be that kind of fan base. I, I watched the double, I remember the double doink um, and going on Twitter after the double doink with Chicago or whatever. It wasn't that Chicago, Parky kid. Yeah, yeah, and then they're yeah. talking about, you know, kill well, Eagles. But yeah. Yeah, yeah but, and kill the guy. And, stuff. and I'm just like, what? Like, relax. Like, everybody relax. There's no reason to come at Tyler Bass. Um, yes, he had a horrible year, his, his worst of the season, but we did not. Once again, we did not lose the game because he missed that kick. Had he made the kick, there was plenty of time on the clock for Mahomes to come down mm -hmm. and try to, um, you know, give them a game winning field goal, much like 13 seconds and win the game. Uh, there was plenty of time. And even if we go into overtime, um, you know, we don't know what's going to happen there. He missed the kick. 
you know, obviously it was it was really devastating. I, you know, I, I had my head down. I did not expect him to miss that kick, and it and it hurt. You know, I mean, that's that's a part of being a sports fan. But all of the personal stuff, I saw a video going around how they were giving Gabe Davis shit after the game. Then I yeah. hear him driving home to Charlotte, and I hear him. He's like, "Yeah, I'm going to test free agency," and you know things like that. And I'm just looking at that video like, "Damn." This could be one of the reasons why he definitely wants to go test free agency because his own home fans are yelling at him from behind the Bills bench after the game. Like the game's over. Go to your car. Like it's over. It, like it's it's what are you yelling at at, at Gabe Davis about? Because he didn't play. Oh, you're you're weak. You're soft. I heard the guys on that one Twitter video. Oh, you don't even know how to run a route. Your fat ass couldn't run any routes. <laughs> so like you couldn't even play for the Buffalo Bills. So just relax. There has to be some type of um there has to be some type of acknowledgement that there is, that these are people. They're not robots. They're not cyborgs. And I just wish that, um, you know, that all fan bases, you know, I talked about that Chicago thing, the Chicago Bulls um, commemoration. I just wish that all fan bases would understand that, yes, we know that you spend your time, your money, you put your emotional investment into it, but they are people at the end of the day. They are not cyborgs. They deserve respect just like anybody else deserves respect. You guys love Micah Hyde. Everybody praises him and his wife yesterday when they're giving out, you know, their last – final farewells to, to Bill's Mafia yesterday with that beautiful piece that his wife wrote up. And like, you think about all the great times in the celebrity, you know, softball tournament that you go down to Salem Field and watch and you're having a great time and getting autographs and shit, going to a uh, training camp. So you you treat him with respect, but but because Gabe Davis didn't play in the game, you're mad at him and he's he's garbage and you don't know how to run around and you're yelling at him and Tyler Bass, you wish he died and death, like death threats. It's, it's a football game. At the end of the day, it's, it's entertainment. We always remind people that it's entertainment, DT. And I I hope that Bill's Mafia backs off. Um, you know, I, again, I know it's a, it's a small percentage, but I was really disappointed to hear that Bill's Mafia was a part of that because uh, I normally think that we're not really a part of that kind of nonsense. Sure. Well said. Well said. And I, I do believe it is a very small percentage. And, you know, and granted that not an excuse or anything for, for this, but, you know, the, the wound is still wide open. It's still very – it's still very prominent that it, this shit just happened, you know. It's so fresh. people are gonna say people are gonna say some out of out of character stuff and whatnot. I'm not making excuses. I'm walking back to the car. Saying, that, I can't but, believe you, I can't believe you fucking missed yeah. the kick. I said I said that like maybe 20 he times. Stepped, stepped up, can't stepped can't up and missed, missed it like it. a bitch, and he did, <laughs> and he did. I mean, he stepped up and missed that kick like a bitch. Like there ain't no like ain't no if and buts about it. Like that's truth. But, but yeah, I'm not, I'm not getting on him. Twitter and telling him he should no. kill himself or, you know, no. that, I agree. And no. we talked about it in the offseason, and, and we'll get into it later, but, like, with the whole dig stuff in the offseason and people, you know, spouting off recklessly and, like, these dudes, they, they're humans too. As much as they right. block out the media and block out the fans, they hear this shit. And, right. and you know, and That's like right. you said, somebody going at Gabe Davis, I'm not I'm debating if Gabe Davis should be on this team or not. It's a, a different episode, but different the fact that if he was contemplating it and, and something like that's going to piss him off and move him, and then we're screwed and can't find another receiver, you know, like you're going to start seeing the the consequences of these actions, right? So uh, I agree. It, 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 chill out, you know. Just the, be better, that's it, all. Keep it in-house, you know, you, we, you can be frustrated, you can be right, but yeah, like, these, these are humans and, and we can't get up on them for shit. And, you know, the pressure they build them from going – you know, kind of contradicts what we preach of growing up as fandoms and not just right. being, you know, cool with the drought and that now we're not bad anymore. So let's just be cool with not being bad. But, you know, people getting hypercritical of the team when they're when we're six and six and, you know, and Josh Allen sucks and he th- turns them all over too much. And then the homeboy wills you to the to the second. And seed you're back and, to loving them. You know, you're it, back to loving every, them. Yeah. It, it, everyone, you know, take take it back and, and realize that, you know, take this team, you know, that. It's not just a a robotic team that does whatever you need. They're they're humans and they're gonna make mistakes. And you know, we we bask when they don't make mistakes and when they get the victories, we we're in there cheering and you know, they're not they're not coming at us for not being as loud as we could have on third down or anything right, like that. So right, right, you know, right. it, it works both ways in that regard. But yeah, come on, give uh he stepped up and missed it, but but he doesn't deserve to die. Let's go. Give me a break. Yeah, absolutely. Now, as we wrap up on the game and before we go to, because I've got a lot of stuff that I wanted to get to on yesterday's press conferences. But, you know, again, the D-line was the most was the healthiest unit, DT. Um, that was a disappointment to see that they didn't come through. Um, you know, two pressures, I think, on Patrick Mahomes. Obviously, no sacks on him. And that was, you know, that was discouraging because regardless of the fact that, you know, everybody wants to rip on A.J. Klein was in there and stuff like that. And, you know, Tyrell Dodson is not that good at, at coverage, and we understand all of those things. But the defensive line didn't 
um, really, you know, make any type of hey. And you've got to, you know, you're plenty of rotation. Day Day was there, and Ed Oliver was there, yeah. and AJ Epinesa was there. Rousseau um, played probably the best of it. I mean, I saw Von Miller flash on a play or two, um, but the the defensive line really wasn't um, a factor in a game that you really you kind of needed it to be because of the way that the back seven was hurt and hampered. Uh, you kind of needed some type of juice um, from those guys up front. It didn't come. Um, I, and again, I'm not laying blame. I'm just I'm pointing out again that everything was not perfect and you can always find places to lay blame. Um, it, you know, it was it was a little bit discouraging to see that the defensive line, the healthiest unit on the team besides the offensive line, really didn't have uh, their best day even remotely. No, not even close. And a place you wanted to really kind of hang your hat on as being okay going into that game. And, right. you know, it wasn't. But we talked game plan of, you know, the game plan of slowing it down, keeping it out of Mahomes' hands because our defense was banged up. Right. All year, you know, and in Sean McDermott's whole career, the mm-hmm. it, the first half of games, it, it always looks like we're getting gashed a little, right? It always right. looks like we're we're getting moved a little, and then they kind of settle in, tighten up, and lock it down. That's been the, the mm-hmm. mentality and the mantra the whole time. In right. this game, they were never, you know, only 22 minutes of them being on the field, they were never in a chance to, you know, to get into that, okay, this is what they're doing. Let's settle right. in. And I'm not – that's just, I know what you I'm mean. not saying that's the only reason. But, I know what you but mean. it was yep. definitely not a characteristic game, game plan of the Bills. You know, it's not something they usually do of trying to keep another team off the field so aggressively like that. Right. And then they did it, and they executed in that. So this defense was kind of coming out there, you know, cold it a few times. And I don't think they're normal, let's settle in and, and get right. I don't think they ever got to that point of being able to settle in because – it was so bang bang the whole game. Yeah, and I mean, it doesn't help when you know the opposite quarterback is 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 ripping you up, and 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 Mahomes yeah. really did um, rip us up in the secondary, and it was something that you know again you could have expected it, but um, uh, it was something that was still it was shocking. I mean, it's when it's happening in real time, it still sucks uh, to be a part of it and watch it. So uh, I really don't have much else on the game. DT was a hell of a game. Um, it was something else um, to be a part of it. We'll get to the Nickel City Crew tailgate okay. report at the end of the show but um you know as we transition i've got to touch on uh my favorite topic as we enter um the off season and that's sean mcdermott you know it's it's funny because when i called him a fraud uh weeks ago people were like oh my god like you know crypt you called him a fraud and like are you gonna back up that like are you sticking by that and like you know and and i and i, and I do you know and i i stick by it i will i gave him his flowers we already have done that so i'm not here on an ass kissing contest or anything like that i've already given the man his flowers for the way that he was more aggressive on defense. I said that it was different than what I anticipated coming into the year. I've already admitted to that. I admitted to the fact that he um, held together a patchwork defense for much of the uh, second half of the year. I've already talked about that. After those London injuries, um, it seemed like injuries were kind of piling on, and then it culminates with that Pittsburgh game, and I've given him his flowers for that. Um, If you listen to Sean McDermott, your head coach, yesterday in that end-of-the-year press conference, um, somebody like me or people that um, have been kind of looking out for him the entire time, couldn't do anything but just sit back and laugh. And this is not a this is not a referendum on anything different than what I've already known. Sean McDermott is a fraud, and he proved it yesterday with the press conferences because when DT in the, in the hell, as my father would say, when in the ham sandwich has Sean McDermott ever said that he was a pass-to-win coach? Let that sink in yesterday. Yeah. And, and, and here's, the, here's the problem that I have with it. Sean McDermott is a professional, so he's a professional head coach. He understands that media is a part of his responsibilities. He has mastered, or, you know, whatever. He's he's good at, he's good at, number one, telling you nothing when he doesn't want to tell you anything. And that's, you know, that's always the coach speak, and let's just try hard, and we got to work harder, and everybody's got to pick up their lunch pail, yada, yada. They got all the the different phrases, and want to let, do their 111th, and he's got all of those phrases down pat. He's got them maybe on a little notepad. He's got them ready to go. In addition to not telling you anything that he doesn't want you to know, he also knows what to say that you want to hear to keep heat off of his ass. He knows that everybody realizes that 2023 going forward, this is a passing league. He understands that. And the fact that he brought Andy Reid's name in it, the coach that just beat him a couple of days before was elegant. It was, it was beautifully done. And all I did was just sit back. That was working. And I was just sitting back there just listening to it. I had my earpiece in and I'm just laughing at this guy because of the fact that I know what he's doing. When have you ever heard him say that he's a pass to win coach, DT? When? When have you yeah. ever heard him say that? I have no. never heard him say that. Not only have I never heard Sean McDermott say that, in the beginning of his tenure, it was clear that he was a run first coach. It was clear that it was 
very much. Why did I always make the comparison to Rex Ryan, Rex Ryan and Dick Duran? Was because of the fact that he was the exact same to me. He liked to stop the run. He liked to run the ball. He loves the trenches. Um, and it just was funny to me because I don't want Bills Mafia to be fake, DT. We've got a long offseason. A lot of stuff's going to be said. Listen to how it was right after the season. Your head coach said he's a pass-to-win coach. And I just – I. I lay it at y'all. When have you guys ever heard him say that? I've ne- I've never heard him talk like that. DTM, correct no. me if I'm wrong. And I know well, WGR did some crazy stuff this morning, like pulling up AI and pulling up all of his quotes, and they couldn't find. I've ne- I've never heard him talk about that. Never, never. No, I mean the the way we're most critical is when he is talking about complimentary football when we have a good pass game, and he's like, well. You know, we need to run better. And, and he says stuff like that, 10, 10 to 1, you know, uh, uh, of this. Or 10 to 0, like you said. He, he never said anything like this. So I agree. He, trying to, you know, and why is he saying that after a game they ran the most other than the Dallas game? I, I haven't pulled up the exact numbers on it, but it seemed like they ran more Sunday than they did all year. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> than they yes. did all year. So yes. I mean, you're two days, two days after you run all, uh, you know, you run the most that you've ran all year, and then they were the most run heavy saying, team after they switched to Joe Brady. DT, yeah. that's what I want. That's what I want. Bills Mafia, shout out Adam Floley. I, I see what you're saying, Adam, and and maybe he is learning his lesson. I don't agree that he's learning his lesson because of the fact that he he has always been this. He has always been a defensive first run offense coach he loves that type of thing he backed into josh allen in my in my opinion he backed into josh allen he did not expect josh allen to be this freak athlete he did not expect josh allen to be this crazy on the cover of madden quarterback that you see here behind me he didn't know that that was coming he was just finished coaching tyrod taylor and getting a team with a minus 56 or 58 point differential to the playoffs like he already he's already shown what he likes to do so i just i just i just call bullshit on it because of the fact that I think it's just easy. It's convenient. He knows what we want to hear. He knows that we know it's a passing league. He knows that we don't add up um, to a lot of those passing teams. And and I feel like, that, you know, because we're, we're devoid of weapons, and we know that. And I just think, like, he's wanting to to keep everybody at bay. He wants everybody off of his ass, DT. That's, that's all I think he's concerned about is making sure that everybody understands that, hey, listen, don't blame me because what did he talk about right before making that statement? I've been to the playoffs six or seven years. He always wants to let you know his co- accomplishments. Because he, you know, he wants that support. Yeah, and what what has he learned? You know, going on Adam's comment just there. What, like, what has he learned? He goes for it on some four towns now yeah. that he didn't used to. He, you know, he, he's a little closer. He doesn't lose games more than seven points. Like, what has he learned? But w- what does all any of that matter when we exit in the divisional round for you know the third straight year? So that that's like the point of you know it goes back to the definition of insanity of. You know, doing the same thing over and over again. Like, yes, has he done some things differently? Sure. He has. But he gave us as our point, but as our point, it, it, it's still the same overall. So Who are you? What is your don't philosophy? Don't get up there and try. Don't get up there and try to be ask me that you're you know a pass happy guy when you know the past three years all you've been doing is bringing in a specific running back set and this and that and, and bringing <laughs> Every in all year. the tight ends and and you know and drafting defense and not caring. We got Stephon Diggs. We're good not caring at all about your, your once in a generation quarterback and what he has to deal with. So yes, I agree. Yes. I agree. Say it again for the point, people Rob in the Ford. back of the room. Yes. Yeah. DT, Rob, yes. For Nickel city and nickel city and bills mafia. Listen to Rob right there. That's a, that's a <laughs> great point of, you know, the man likes to say what we want to hear and, and make it okay. But in reality, what's, you know, what's, what's Watch right. my actions. I can, I can yeah. fool you. I can, listen, I can talk with the best of them. I'm, I'm a slick talker. I, I can talk with the best of them. Watch my moves. How do I operate? Watch my actions. What do I do? Where do I spend my time? The, you know, different things like that. You know, I love my Kings. You know what I mean? I love them. So what do I do? I put my money where my mouth is. Let's, let's, I want to be a part of them growing up in sports. So what do I do? Well, sure. the best way to be a part of them in sports is to coach their teams and to be right by them or assist to coach their team, things like that. I want to see them grow, um, you know, athletically, things like that. So like that's watch my actions, the actions of, of Sean McDermott and the amount of assets that he has poured into his defensive line, which we just talked about, came up lame on Sunday, the healthiest unit on the field besides the yeah. offensive line. And um, now it again, doesn't exist. The, and that doesn't exist. Yeah. Um, we talk about the, uh, let's see, you know, 
at Damian Harris. And then the year before that, it's, you know, you know, all these, all these running backs every year, just to, cause he's looking for a different element. Now you guys could be naive enough to blame that on the offensive approach. And I just don't McDermott has his hands all in this team. He's got his hands on the draft. He's got, he's, he was hired before Brandon Bean. Somebody asked on WGR, does Brandon Bean have the authority to fire, to fire McDermott? Yeah. And I almost fell off the road. Like what? Are, like, seriously, the, listen, McDermott is so well respected by the Pagulas that again, that's why we had that episode where we we're asking Dad, will he pull over the car? Like we had an episode all dedicated to Dad, will you pull over the car? Because we're screaming in the back, and that's the only way that we can get your attention. So at this point in time, I, I just I feel like I'm I'm worried about the fact that he is so um involved, he has so much power um in the organization that again, until P- Terry Pagula sees it differently than he sees it now i think we're in for a lot of it now does that mean that we cannot win a super bowl no it doesn't mean that the stars yeah. can align and and we can get it done um but i do know that this guy fired his offensive coordinator after 12 men on the field on a special teams play and in a game that we had actually scored you know a few points what the case may be and then be, we become the, the run happiest team in the league now if you say that it has nothing to do with sean mcdermott then i just feel like you're you're choosing to believe that because joe brady was not a, a run heavy coordinator in carolina he was not a run heavy coordinator for the lsu tigers some would consider the the greatest college football team of all time with joe burrow jamar chase justin jefferson so that's not his mo is to run the ball till you're blue in the face why did we do it against dallas because it was working and because they had light men in the box with, with 200 pound linebackers so they started to pound it down their throat i have no problem with that because of the fact that we scored 31 points but that's not the the identity of the team is not a run based team the identity shifted um for that team and because of the fact that they won you couldn't say shit other than the fact that hey man we got you winning close games against the chargers winning close games against the patriots you win all these squeakers against teams that you would normally blow out but it, it doesn't matter because it's a results-based business. We got the results. They got those six straight wins, five straight wins to get to the playoffs, and, and everybody um, was okay with everything. And I understand that. I hope Joe Brady's back. I hope they do interview some other guys to get some other perspectives, DT, on what some other guy offensive minds have to think out there. But if he comes back, I want it to be his offense. And I and I just – the offensive shift after Joe Brady came uh, uh, under uh, – into his position, I just – I, I – um, I just have a tough time believing that McDermott wasn't a part of it the same way that I, I knew. And I just, I could do nothing but laugh when he said that I, I cut my teeth around Andy Reed, you pass to win. And I just, I, I, I call bullshit. Cause I, I, he has never even been that kind of coach. He never, he doesn't even talk like that. It, I mean, it didn't even sound like him up there. And I was just like, dude, I'm on, I'm, I'm on, I just, I'm on to him. I'm sorry, DT. I'm on to him. After, after a game, you ran the whole game and no, no, I agree. But, or or those passes behind the line of scrimmage, you know what I mean? And yeah. and and Joe yeah. DiBiase on DGR, you know, brought up a great great point that maybe it's because they knew that they don't have the weapons. So and and I'll I'll, I'll listen to that. Sherfield's a special teamer, you know. Hardy barely sees the field. I'll, I'll listen to some of that type of stuff. Stefan Diggs' production fell off a cliff for whatever reason. I don't think he was hurt. I've heard many people that said he was not hurt. So I don't know where that comes from. But it's it's a couple of years now that that's been happening, and that's concerning. But I just don't want to. Uh, I just don't want to let him get away with it. I'm sorry. I, I and sure. you know I've got something for McDermott. I just not, I'm not going to let and him get away with it. And that's fair. And that's fair. But the reality is it's probably, you know, dad's not pulling the car over. You know, as much as <laughs> oh, we saw it. Oh, no. It, could it be a reality oh, in no. season six maybe? Is it now? Hell no. You know, the, oh, no. this We're, dude's uh, here to stay at least, uh-uh. at least another year. So we have to be realistic and, and on the other side of, you know, insanity, doing things over and over and expecting the same result. We can't just sit here and bitch that, you know, he, yeah, he he's, he's, fooling us he's fooling us but he's still the coach of this team and we're still gonna have to find a way to win with him so oh no i, yeah, I that, agree 100 percent. yeah no i wasn't i wasn't but, doing it I'm, I'm giving my psa for bill's mafia for nickel city crew sure. heading into the offseason dad is not listening this is the coach and he is going to be the coach now i start to wonder if there's another repeat next year dt and it's the same round or something like that yeah. will pagula but again we already talked about that episode at length it's going to take somebody very very close to Terry and Kim Bagula to bring this to their attention is is it realistic to think that Brandon Bean is going to to you know stab in the back of the own the, his own head coach you know and go to and go to the Bagulas and say man I you know I love him but Sean's not getting this job done we got to think about get bringing somebody else in that I just don't I don't think that that's realistic I think it's going to take somebody that's higher up um, a family member um, another executive around the league somebody that is close to Terry and Kim to bring him. Um, to a realization that enough is enough. And um, and it's definitely not happening this year. 
and we'll see yeah. what uh, what what twenty four brings. So I <laughs> wasn't saying to say that fire McDermott Amagola because fired everybody, he's so not, he doesn't he's even have fired. an organization. He yeah. is the organization, so that's going to make it even harder for for that to happen. So uh, absolutely. We'll, well, we'll as see. we be, as we begin to wrap up a little bit, you know, I, I I didn't know how long this episode would go or anything like that. So we appreciate Nickel City Crew um, being in here, uh, Adam Foley and all the rest of the guys being in here. Scott, uh, we appreciate you guys interacting with us as well. You know, it's funny because I, I just say, you know, wake me up in September now. Uh, you know, the draft is the draft and all that other stuff. I still expect, um, you know, them to address their needs. They're going to draft a defensive player. Hopefully not around one, but it's going to happen because they've got a, you know a few holes to fill, especially if the safeties are going out. You already talked about the defensive line, DT. Um, one thing that I, I definitely don't want to do um, for sure, and it was something that I heard um, from from Mike Shope, to be honest. And I'm gonna I'm gonna write him. I'm not a coward, so I'm gonna write him on Twitter after this. I'm not just gonna blast him on my show and then not um, give him a chance to defend himself. But it, I, he he had said something the other day that really bothered me, to be honest, DT. He had said that a, a reasonable fan could say that when Stefan made this gesture with the, this close, that a reasonable fan could wonder if he wants to be there anymore. And and I don't even know where you make that leap from. And I would just, I, I would love for Bills Mafia not to get on Stefan Diggs this offseason. Last offseason was draining because of the drama. Um, it was draining because of all of the things that we were talking about this man. Three-time captain now, okay, so three-time, voted by his peers, not by us. Not by Nickel City Crew, not by Bills Mafia, not by anybody, by the people that go to work with him. Okay, so this is three years running now that they say, you can lead us. You can lead us. You can be a part of the leadership group because we trust you. Um, the fact that somebody can think that this meant F you to Josh or I don't want to be in Buffalo anymore, um, I, I really think that you're stretching. And, you, and I'm, I'm starting to question if you have something against uh, Stefan Dick. And I'm being honest. I'm being honest, DT. You could correct me if I'm wrong, but how you get this, this means. This close, this is exactly what it means. It doesn't mean Josh throw it a little bit better. It went through his fucking hands. So if it went through his arms, then obviously he couldn't be asking for a better throw. Please, Bills Mafia, Nickel City Crew, don't get on this guy this offseason because you don't understand him or he's misunderstood. We did the miseducation episode. Stefan Diggs wants to win badly. It's almost like a Jordan obsession or a Kobe obsession. He wants to win really, really bad. When he came back to OTAs, he told you as such. He said it was like pushing a ball up a hill and then it rolls back down how he felt with the playoff exits. He's already told you. They asked him, well, do you want to be an offensive coordinator? You thought, is he, are you mad at Dorsey? He said, I would be an idiot to try to call plays. I'm a wide receiver. I don't call plays. I believed him. Call me stupid. I believed him. I don't want the offseason to be more digs drama that is manufactured by us. We're looking for something to talk about, and then we manufacture bullshit that does not even exist. I believe that Stefan Diggs has been the single most um, important reason to Josh Allen's elevation, period, DT. I think he is the number one reason why our quarterback ascended. Now, obviously, Josh Allen's got to go to work. He's got to do his offseason work with Jordan Palmer. He's got to, you know, he has to put in the work. He's got to be a professional. However, after that, when it comes to on the field stuff, DT, there is no bigger impact on Josh Allen's ascension than Stefan Diggs. Josh Allen knows it. I know they always love to tell us that they love each other and yada, yada, yada. We have no idea how much they really love each other. We have no idea how much they really hang out. Stefan Diggs is more of a fashion guy. He doesn't hang out in Buffalo, nor does Josh Allen really hang out in Buffalo in the offseason. We have no idea their interactions during the offseason. Let's stop trying to dissect everything that he means or this and what is it. And I, I, I almost just, I fell almost out of my seat when I heard Mike show, because this guy is on the number one radio station in Western New York, Sports Talk. And he says a reasonable person would think that this meant that he doesn't want to be here anymore. And I just um, completely offended, completely off base. Um, I, I I just don't agree at all. And um, I'm hoping that Bill's Mafia this, this spring, summer, give the guy a break. Let's not try to create something because last year was really annoying, DT. That way it was it was like tiring to like, you know, what is he tweeting and this and that. And it was just it, I, I had so much of it. I had too much. Of yeah. It. Well, the the fact of you know the the Buffalo media and the media in general it, itself, it, excluding us, it, I think is you know unfairly has the spotlight on him for the I don't wrong think they reasons. Like him. And, yeah, I don't think yeah, they like him. and and it's just a fact of oh, what, what's he going to do? Is he going to blow up next? And the game, the uh, I think it was the Eagles game, they kept showing him on the sideline waiting for him to blow up and every time they showed him he's there helping getting teammates going helping teammates up and i think producers at that game were probably like oh shit 
Like exactly. he's not he's not yelling at somebody. He's not yelling at somebody. Looking he's for the next viral video. Yep. He's being a good teammate. And, and that was the Which vibe. He's always of, been. You know, the the first day he missed that OTA and five fifty was all over it. And get Sal him out of Capaccio, town. They said Sal get him Capaccio out of town. Can sit here and say it's my job to report he wasn't at OTAs. And it's like no, you came in and poured the gas on that fire and you guys watched it burn and said oh. But it it they was loved it. so they I agree. It. There's a lot of there is a a part of the fan base and definitely the media that that wants wants him to be the villain and and he's yes. shown he hasn't. But on the reverse end of this, Rob. Okay. You got to make plays, man. You got to make plays. Shitty, horrible drop. Horrible drop. Horrible that, drop. I, it, I'm not even second. Yes, that's that's a big one. But second part of the season, the product, the targets are still there. Everything's still there. There's probably other factors. It wasn't Has just him. Wasn't just him. But to be. you got to make plays. Like you got to, you know, Randy Moss didn't stop making plays. Terrell Owens didn't stop making plays. Like yep. you got to keep making plays. And then the game where a team where you've disappeared in, in the past that, against the Chiefs and a chance to really blow it out and that catch would have, you know, took the the, uh, the roof, non-existent yeah. roof off the stadium yeah. that we'll yeah. never see yeah. in a Bill Stadium, a roof. Yeah, they yeah. took the non-existent roof off and yeah. probably would have won us the game. If Maybe. it comes down and catch that ball on Wednesday, Maybe. and that's what you're talking about—the the inches of you know from from last year and pushing that the ball up the hill and it falling falling back down—that was your chance to kind of push it over that at least hold it on the top. I right. don't know if it's going to go over, but at least hold it at the top and it's not coming down yet, and you, and you didn't execute. So yeah. you deserve to be criticized for that, but you yes. don't deserve to be criticized to be a bad teammate. You want out and. All these reports of report that Stefan Diggs doesn't isn't asking for a trade. Who said he was asking for a fucking trade? It doesn't make any sense to me. I listen, I'm fair. I have no problem. What you want to break down Stefan Diggs' you know production drop off? You want to break down his play? You want to break down that Kansas City game? You we can do that. That's that's on the field stuff. I don't have mind you know doing that. I just don't like the attacks on the character because yeah, do you think he's a fool? Do you think his agent's a fool? If he know if if Brandon Bean knows that the dead cap is over 30 fucking million dollars and we can't get rid of him, you know, at least this year, you know, coming into 2024. Do you think that him and his agent are dummies as well? You think that they don't know that the Bills can't cut him either? So because of that, like, it it, it behooves him to get along. It behooves him to make sure, <coughs> excuse me, in addition to the fact that we don't know that he doesn't want to be here. Yeah. Because no, he's I never agree. voiced anything like that. Yeah. And this is what the Straight guidance up. that we went through last year. I just don't want another you can be repeat critical. of it. I just don't you want to be critical. Repeat. You can be critical of his play on the field and he didn't step up when he needed to. Okay. But the, the character bullshit and, and just waiting for him to fuck up, I'm done with. And, and I won't have any time for that this year. Yeah. I'll, three three I'll, times captain. So thank you for at least getting yeah. me on that. I have no, I have anybody want to, you know, get back, be on Twitter and talk about, oh, he missed the, pe-. like, listen, that's, that's totally fine. That's on the field stuff. He should have made the catch. Does, do we know that he's going to, we're going to win the game if he makes that catch? No, he could have fallen after he got, a, after he got that catch. It doesn't matter. It's about the fact that we need, you know, you're getting paid a, a ton of money and, and that's a part of your job description is to catch the football. So we need you to make plays, period. It, it stops there. That's the same thing about Tyler Bass. You're paid to go up there and make that kick in, in the wind and the swirl. If it's, if it's towards the, you know, the, uh, the, the, um, the tunnel or if it's the other way towards the scoreboard, you're paid to make the kick. And we understand that. I don't mind criticizing players for on the field i mind when it starts to attack their personal character and and in my case um in my opinion excuse me stefan diggs has been nothing but a model teammate he has elevated the most important player on the team josh allen um and and he's made him into that superstar in respect again josh had to put in the work as well anytime i say that people are like well josh had to do the work too no shit like i understand that josh had to still be a professional and care about his craft but don't tell me that stefan Diggs doesn't care about his craft and stop telling me that he doesn't want to be a buffalo bill when nothing has even remotely been reported um or come out of his mouth of the other way so you know i i just don't want it to be a whole off season of that bullshit as well but uh, Nickel City Crew Tailgate Report, uh, as we could be, uh, begin to wrap up tonight, presented by 26 Shirts here on uh, Buffalo Fan Base, the Bills Mafia Podcast Network. Please head on over to 26shirts.com for all of the latest Buffalo themed t shirts. Again, they all support a great cause. Portions of the proceeds go to families in need. Um, DT, it was an ep- I mean, it just it, it adds to the exhaustion. That's why I named the episode the way that I did. Because everything couldn't have been more perfect, DT. I mean, I mean, honestly, could it have been like everything couldn't have been more perfect leading up to it? Um, if you didn't know, DT and I. 
got a chance. If you didn't check out our Instagram, but we got a chance to get back together. Uh, the brotherhood was back together for uh, for this big game. And um, it was awesome. You know, I came up on Saturday. Uh, I got there in the afternoon and my plan was to go make, a, you know, a couple rounds and stuff like that and see some people um, for a little bit. And, and what happened was I, I dropped off the turkey um, and, and, and got that thing shot up. And then all of a sudden, uh, I sat on DT's couch, and I just, <laughs> it, I, I guess DT's right, man. I must be getting older because uh, I don't know that road just hit me a little bit harder, and I, I laid down maybe sometime before uh, that San Francisco game got started, DT. And then all of a sudden, I was, I was out for a few hours, man. I, I didn't get a chance to even run around Buffalo and check out a lot of people. I, I, I slept, man. I was, I was tired. <laughs> <laughs> hey, that's, a, that's all right. You know the the batch pad, the batch pad is, uh, is comfortable and. Uh, yeah, and, yeah. So. So I'm glad, uh, you know, it was comfortable enough for, you know, long day. We got, the, we got the turkey shot up. And, oh, yeah, and you, big, you know, big girl. Yep, it, yep. And, it, it and was that really was nice. good. And, yeah, it was it was good to get it rolling and, and just prepare. You know, we, we knew it was going to be a big day Sunday. Had to get all our clothes in order. Had to get the layers set out and, yep. and ready. And I like that it was, you know, we were just chilling in that regard, too, to, to, to be prepped for, for game day. Yeah, man, absolutely. So next day, Sunday morning comes and uh, – we're up and at them early in the morning. Um, you know, we knew that we weren't going to get out there too, too early because of the fact that it was six thirty kick. And, and DT brought it to my attention that Rob, like, if we're going to get to the stadium at like nine or something <laughs> like in the morning, that's like coming to the stadium at like five in the morning or four in the morning. Yeah. It was crazy. Four a.m. for yeah, one o'clock. Yeah, we did the reverse math on the six thirty start. I was like, oh, holy shit, yeah. I guess we can't go get <laughs> breakfast. So it's funny because uh, we were waiting on Big Ben and those guys to get there. So. We head over to Pancake House, my favorite. This is the number one place I miss. I wish I could franchise it down here in Charlotte because I know it would be a hit. I love the Pancake House, and uh, we went to Pancake House. It was full of Bill's Mafia that morning. I think we saw a table that was like 30 people deep in the middle yeah. of the restaurant yeah. as soon as you yeah. opened the door uh, there at the Orchard Park location, and it was really nice, man. Everybody was smiling. Uh, we saw the waiter had his uh, Mafia Zubas. Yeah, uh, yeah. we're going to have to look on. into that, actually. Yeah, you're like, those I need are, one those of those for nice, golf. Yeah. I was like, I, we told him, I told him, like, like, like your shirt, man. He said it was a gift. He said it's one of he his He said treasures. it was his prized possession. Yeah, yeah he said yeah. it was his prized possession. So that was really cool. Breakfast went well. And we got to the stadium, literally couldn't even have planned it any better if we tried to. We literally yeah. got there the exact same time as our tailgate crew. So shout out to Big Ben and a K uh, Fennell out there and, uh, we were ready to go, uh, Mike. We were all out there. We were ready to go. And what time yeah, do you think Mike, we got there? Right around uh, eleven. Right, quarter quarter of eleven. We pulled yeah. in. Quarter of eleven. Um, yeah. Sun sun was out. Uh, beautiful Sunday morning. I mean that it was it was brisk. Don't get us wrong, but you know <laughs> that that sun that sun helped out a lot. Um, yeah. And, and we got set up pretty quick. And and we yeah. were one of the first people in the lot. We kind of watched it fill in again. We beat the. Parking the lot <laughs> attendants, you know, to, yep, to the stadium yep. lot. They had to come around and collect, and it went uh, up ten well, bucks. Oh my god, oh, 60, oh. 60 bucks! They went up ten bucks for playoffs. This is extra. This is free money. This is yeah. found money for them, and yeah. they're going to run us up ten bucks. Come on, that, we'll, we'll bring that up at the board <laughs> meeting, at the board meeting. But yeah, um, yeah, <laughs> yeah. It was it was a beautiful day. We we had a beautiful setup. You know, the the club down in the corner, as we like to call it, had yeah. three tents. You know, the the fires going for warmth. They had the field goal post the the drinking games table and you know and big brand with the with the speakers got it set up and, two, and got up. it going yeah, yeah we were we were one of the first people in there and you know had a nice setup established ourselves in that corner and 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 kick that day man. off yeah. it was great man it, it, you know and, and you know it's it's funny because um you know for much of the drought you know so I've been a season ticket holder since 2009 I only skipped when my kings were born um I I the tailgate during the drought was the event, you know what I mean? Because you knew yeah. that you were getting ready to walk into the stadium and, you know what I mean, it probably wasn't going to work out. Now, I, I, I can admit that I would have optimism and I'd get up for the Tom Brady games and like, okay, this is the fucking year. This is the year. <laughs> and, and all this stuff. And, and you can hype yourself up. The best thing about the tailgates now is the marriage between the tailgate traditions that we already have yeah. and a great team. That makes it just so, like, lovely. I walked yeah. through that stadium just feeling so great. I was grateful for the opportunity to get this done. We had asked for it. Like, we, we've we always talked about that. We asked for Pat Mahomes to get on a plane. And, you know, somebody had said, I said, you know, wonder, I wonder how they were and what time they got in last night. And, you know, somebody said, I hope he had a fucking horrible night for sleep. And it, it's just funny to think about that type of stuff because we did. We asked for it. I, I will say, DT, you know, Bill's Mafia, we stood up and we we did our part. We I lost my yeah. voice. I mean, I did everything I could do. I was I yeah. was loud, not just on third down. I was banging the seats on first and second down, too. Now, it is deflating when they're getting 20-yard chunk plays and 10- and 15-yard chunk plays all the time. And, you know, they're running through us like hot knife through butter. But, I mean, 
the mafia itself from the start of the game we were we were into it it was everything that we anticipated it would be and it was um I think that that's the, the best thing about those tailgates is now I don't have to watch a crappy team when we walk into the stadium, DT. The marriage between the tailgate yeah. traditions and a great team, it, it is it is a match made in heaven. It makes Bill's yeah. Mafia unique because the table table smashing and the fires were born out of the drought. It wasn't because, of, you yeah. know, they weren't doing that shit back in the <laughs> 90s when my dad yeah. was going to the games and stuff like that. I was five, six, seven, eight for the Super Bowl run. That stuff wasn't happening. They didn't need any type of extracurricular entertainment because the team was so damn good. And Jim Kelly is getting ready to throw to Andre Reid and, and Thurman's going to run all over you. And Bruce is going to sack your quarterback and things like that. So it's funny because of the fact that uh, the, the marriage between a great team and stuff like that with the tailgate traditions, mm -hmm. I, I, I do love it. And and yeah. I will miss it if I don't come back because I, I I I love that. It, I agree. I agree. And, you know what and I mean? the friends we've made. I mean, the friends we've made. And, and yes. perfect example. You and I, man. You and I. Yes. Our, yes. Our friendship, our yes. <laughs> you know, directly derived from you know from this tailgate and the team we have out there. Yeah. And, you know, and I get together with most of the crew. Um, you know, in, in the off season as well, and mm -hmm. and look forward to it. And it's it's lifelong, you know, friendships and and togetherness and. Yeah, was a was a good day Sunday. That the bird, I, I man, I, Nickel City. I'm gonna be truthful with you. At the end of that tailgate, I, I I'm trying to get back and recollect. I think I lost it for a while there, Rob. I, how was I getting up into that game? Because I, 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 the last like hour, it was just dark. All of a sudden, it was just dark, and we were in the game. And I don't really remember how we how the turkey was, how we got it was great. Beat up. So, uh, I mean, hey, let's go. Let's it go. was great. That turkey usually was great. don't happen. Yeah, we did a honey teriyaki. Happen, but... We did a honey yeah, teriyaki yeah. at your house the day before, and um, and yeah, it turned out great. You know, three minutes a pound. It was a big one. I usually don't cook birds over twenty pounds, but it was playoffs. It was Mahomes. We called the we, remember we called the bird Patty. Yep, Patty so we had Patty, Patty yeah. ready to go. She was a twenty one pounder, and uh, we it, it, she turned out perfect. You know, the skin was nice and crispy. Uh, the inside, uh, we you brought your knife for me inside. I mean, juices just flowing right out yep. of it. Um, so it was really great. Everybody seemed to enjoy it. Um, shout out again to Kayla and Anna Kay. They brought, you know, chicken wing dip. There was chicken wing soup, uh, chicken wing dip soup. I had never had that yeah. before, like potatoes oh, and, in there, and, soft yeah. potatoes. That shout, was good. And, uh, yeah, shout out to uh, my friend Ashlyn. Um, my yes. friend Chris, her brother Nick came up from yes. Manhattan. They're, from Manhattan, they're for yeah. two of those first uh, first Bills game with a good one to start at. And they were out there getting getting after it with us and enjoying the time. They brought some yes. Kelly's Corners wings that, that were great. Yes, and the, they did. Uh, the Rushi family, the Rushi family, we missed uh, – we missed our boy Noah. Um, yes. Got a baby coming coming uh, soon. Met so his, that, yes, I met his dad. Of that, yes. but, but met yes. Pops and, and all his brothers were there, and they were like, "Yeah, look at that dude. That must be your son." <laughs> yeah, they look exactly yeah. like. Yes, I yeah. do remember yeah. that. So shout out, so, absolutely. So good people all around us, man. Yeah, man. I mean, you know, it was a great season. Um, it was um, a great tailgate. You know, again, I, I didn't get a chance to get up to as many games as I wanted to um, this year because that that was just life and stuff going on down here with the Kings and, you know, yada, yada, yada. So that just such is life. But, you know, again, um, the Bills already had my money, so I'd already invested. So, you know, we invest a lot into the Buffalo Bills. They're a part of our life, uh, our lives. They are a part of our families. Um, you know, it, it broke my heart. You know, I, I anticipated that Nate would cry because he, um, he I mean, he cried in the regular season one time this year. And I was like, hey. Cut that shit out. It, you can only cry in the playoffs. I'm like, we have, you know, whatever it was, 12, 13 games left. I'm like, don't do that. Not play up, not regular season. Just a, you'll 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 drive yourself insane if you're gonna be every, ready to be on the edge of your seat and cry every week. So just just yeah. relax, pace yourself. Let's wait till the playoffs. And and unfortunately, I talked to his mother and she said he cried like a baby. Um, you know, after that Kansas City loss and and stuff like that. So, you know, it, it's tough because you know, I feel like you know, partially responsible. I've created Bill's monsters of, you know, even my youngest <laughs> Quincy, who's, who's about to be five this summer. He, he was not crying, but he was right there with Nate watching the game. They were all watching it together uh, on Sunday uh, with their mothers. And it was funny just to hear because, you know, not funny, but, it, you know, I, I know what Nate's like. And he wears his emotions on his sleeve, just like his father. And um, a, another reason why I, I, I do think, you know, I might want to just be with him next year. Just enjoy a season with him. You know, enjoy a season watching it with him and, and, and Quincy and and Bobby checks in every now and then on the game and stuff like that and see what the score is. But um, it, it's a lot, DT. It's a lot. And I and, and even for people in Western New York, you know, I mean, going yeah. out. I mean, I heard some people were in traffic for two, three hours. Now we've got mm. we've mastered our exit plan. And don't stuff like don't, that. don't give them. Don't Not give giving it away. But we, we've mastered our <laughs> exit plan uh, from the stadium. But like, you know, you, you think about if you even if you came at 12 o'clock or even if you came at four o'clock. Four o'clock, you come, you tailgate for a few hours, you go into the game, and then you don't get home for two hours after the game's over, after a three and a half hour game. 
that's a, it's a lot. It's a it's a big commitment. Twenty degrees and yeah, for sure. I mean, degrees cold. I, I'm I'm a bachelor. I have zero responsibility. I, I you know I'm the cleanest it can get when it comes to anything other than me. Right. And right. Uh, and yeah, and I, it's exhausting. It is exhausting. Even if you're going, <laughs> even if you're going sober, you know, you're just going to to drive or whatever. You're just you're in the cold. You're always kind of on the uneven, you know, surfaces. There's thousands of people. You always got to walk head on a swivel at all right. times. And yeah. You know, not taking any. There's no place I'd rather be than right no here, right now, right? No but place. no place. Yeah, the, the reality of it is, it, it, it ain't it, it ain't easy. <laughs> you know, it ain't easy. We've been doing it for a long time. You know, well, again, I'll I'll take some time. It ain't um, a hobby. You no, know, it's and you always say that, DT, and, and that's absolutely right. It is. It's a way of life. It's not a hobby. We do this because we love the bills. Um, you know, I did it as well because I love the bills and I love the the people, you know what I mean? And my family and I, you know, I was out of state. So that's how it, it started for me in 09 was because I missed the bills. I missed my family and I missed the food, you know, the, 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 the three F's, you know, with football, uh, food and family. And I, you know, and it was, it just worked out perfect where I could just come back and I can, you know, kill two birds, one stone, come up, see people, and then head back to Charlotte. Um, after doing it, what is this? It's 2023. <laughs> now, I mean, like I've been, it's been a long time. So I want to say that I'm for the ride. I, I intend um, to still uh, be a season ticket holder. But I do know that the Bills need to keep those emails the fuck away from me right now because I don't want to talk <laughs> about it. I don't want to see a bill. I don't want to see the total for next year. There's always inflation. They always go up just a few bucks every year. I don't even want to think about any of that uh, right now. I just want to um, relax, watch the rest of the postseason, and then I guess we'll get ready for the draft. So Nickel City crew, uh, we love you guys so much. It's been um, uh, such a pleasure. Uh, we've been ramping up our social media presence. We really enjoy inter interacting with you guys. Love these lives. Now we will be going season four. It's already been put in stone, write it in stone. Season four will be a, a completely live season. So we love interacting. Um, shout out to the guys there in the chat room tonight. We just love interacting. I love it. That's one of the reasons I started the podcast. I wanted to talk to more Bills fans other than, again, my Bills thoughts said out loud. I just talked to the Bills in my head all day like a crazy man. So I wanted to start interacting with people. That's what spawned uh, the podcast a few years ago. DT, you know I love you like uh, my Bills brother from another mother, man. I I, I love you, man. Um, had a had a blast this weekend, man. I really did. I had a blast. Thanks for your hospitality. Uh, it was top notch. And, um, you know, I'm going to miss you, man. But, uh, you know, we'll, we'll get back up. We'll, we'll get back up for sure. We'll get back. Yeah, same right right back at you, Rob. It's been a, uh, you know, a tough ending to the season. But like I said at the start, I wouldn't wouldn't trade it for the world. No. It's a beautiful no. to get up and, and to be a part of this city and this team and, you know, what it means to me from – when I was a child all the way up until now and, you know, yep. the friendships and, and, and getting you and sitting here side by side every week and getting yep. us off our chest. It, it, it means a lot. And, you know, it's, it's something that I think we're, we're getting good at as well as, you know, it, it, it's good for us and good for people. And anybody sure. that listens is we've only heard good, good responses. And I hope that keeps going, but yeah. you know, the main reason of this is our friendship and, and, mm -hmm. and everything together to, to, to keep this team up and, and, and cheer on this squad that, that, that we know and love. We love so yeah. <laughs> love every part of it, man. It, it, a, another season was not the outcome we want, but a good season overall. And, you know, wouldn't, wouldn't have it any other way than be right next to you here at the crew, baby. Yeah, man. I, I love you, DT. I mean, we will, um, again, season four will be completely live. Uh, we're going to take some time off, <clears throat> excuse me, relax, take a break. Got Super Bowl coming up in a couple weeks um, next month. So we'll, we'll kind of decompress. Uh, we will be back right right around draft time. I usually say right around draft times when you can start yeah. to turn the page a little bit and see uh, what's going we'll, on. We'll Maybe be itching. I, we'll, be we'll be itching. itching. You know, if there's yeah. anything crazy, if Stefan Diggs calls to be traded, you know what I mean, sometime next <laughs> month, we'll, we'll definitely come up with a, a special episode. But, uh, but season four uh, will start next year in earnest right around draft time. This is a wrap on season three. Please, out there, spread love, not hate. These were my Bill's thoughts said out loud. For the final time in season three, DT hit them with a go Bills. Please hit them with a go Bills. Go Bills. <laughs> Love it, man. We'll see y'all in season four, man. Be easy. <laughs>